Well, it's time for me to finally get started on this upgrade to the table saw that I've been putting off for, you know, two years. What I'll be doing today is removing this steel press wing, and I'm going to be replacing it with um, essentially a, a miniature, really nice woodworking table. Uh, this has been done a couple of different times. I know Dima's workshop did a really nifty um, version of it. His was nice and long with the vise down over there. I've seen a couple other ones that have a vise over on the side here um, for a smaller clamping style, and that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, all in all, I'm using three seven foot um, stud two by fours. I've got a one inch dowel that I'm going to be making into some um, bench dogs. And then this is just a woodworking vise, and I ended up getting this one for I think 15 bucks or something. So I think my total cost was maybe 25 to 30 dollars. It's a very affordable upgrade. So uh, to get started, I'm going to take off this wing. Yeah. I am working on a rigid R4512, so in my case, to get this wing off, I'm kind of see if I get down. There are these holes, and inside these holes, um, here we go. Eh, it's hard to focus through that darkness, but there's some nuts. Uh, I just take an Allen wrench to it, and I can take off this hole and this hole. And then if we get underneath to show you, and the light might be an issue, but over up in here, there we go. Um, I just have to loosen the nuts on those bolts and then this cap comes off right here and then it's like a T-track and it can just slide right on out. All right, as we lift this off, <coughs> slide it out, ta-da, beautiful. Wanted to show you another thing. So as I'm building this, we're gonna have to take this into account. Up here we've got some, in this uh, rigid table saw, we've got some ventilation. Underneath here is the motor for the actual table saw. Um, and obviously this, this bumps out, you know, three, probably four inches. So I'm going to want to leave some space for that um, as I'm actually cutting my two by fours here. But slide these out since I popped off my end cap. There's the end cap just for reference. <coughs> so my next step now is going to be to take these, this is a dimension for me of 27 inches here. I'm going to cut them oversized. Um, I think I can get three of 28 inches on the seven foot board. And that's more than enough. This is 10 inches from here to here. Um, I might extend that out just a little bit farther. I think, um, let's see, uh, three, six, nine. I'll probably do 12 um, just because I feel like it and I can and um, I'll show you what I'm going to do to save some ventilation space up here, how I'm going to cut those boards, and it'll be all fine in the end. Now that I've got each of these boards cross-cut to about 28 inches, I'm going to go ahead and rip them to get rid of uh, all these rounded over corners. Um, cut off one side, cut off the other side, and their final width is going to be about three inches. So now that those have all been ripped of their rounded edges and they're cut to a rough length here of 28 inches, I just went and arranged them. You know, I've got some slightly different colored wood and uh, what I patterned it as, essentially with my eyes, I see red, yellow, red, red, yellow, red, red, yellow, red. So just making it a visual distinction. And because I wanted to keep this pattern that I have here, I decided to incorporate all of my boards which makes the width, you know, uh, 13 and three quarters approximately. So that'll be a lot wider um, than the stainless steel wing that used to be on there by about three inches, which is just fine. So um, now I'm just going to glue this up, pretty standard, spread out some glue, uh, wipe it so it covers all surfaces and then clamp it up nice and tight. And we'll leave that to sit overnight. So while we wait for the glue to dry on the workbench, I'm going to make myself some bench dogs. There are dozens of different kinds you can see how to make online or you can buy in the store. Mine are pretty simple. I've got a one inch oak dowel here, nice and hard and sturdy. I'm going to oversize them to about four and a half inches. So I'll be cutting in the tooth on my handy dandy scroll saw here. Since I don't have a bandsaw, you can do that too. Um, when I want them, I'm going to hammer them up from the bottom. When I don't want them, I'm going to hammer them down from the top, real simple. 
Now that the glue in the workbench has had time overnight to dry in clamps, we can take these clamps off and start working on leveling the top surface, which is what we have right here. It's relatively free of glue. I'll scrape some of this off. Um, I don't need a perfectly milled flat surface for my workshop purposes. Um, obviously you can be as detailed on this as you want. I'm going to be using just a series of planes and sanding this to the uh, level of smoothness that I need because at 13 and a half inches, it's just too wide for my planer. With the surface now flattened to my liking, I'm going to take this to my table saw and I'm gonna cut out about three and a quarter, three and a half inches from the back side so that I can accommodate for that bump out for the motor casing on my particular table saw. Um, yours may be the same, yours may be different. Either way, just making a very simple modification. All right, now that that notch is taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to its final length. In my case, that's 27 inches between the front and the back rail. And then I'm going to do a round over just on the tops of both of the ends. So again, those are rail facing as opposed to the, the two sides that are going to be going against the table saw or against the vise. Look at that. Did a test fit and everything looks real great. Um, I've actually got two um, pins on this side that are slid into the T-track already and this section is leaning up on the bump out. That's why it's staying still. Um, in order to find the markings for this, what I did was I took the old steel wing and I just um, put this upside down, put this upside down and I transferred the holes, drilled some and I used some screws that I had um, and it worked out really nicely. So you can see when all is said and done, this will be nice and level like so. Well, I'll give you a better view shortly of that. But anyways, I've got two screws over here that are slid in the T-track. I've got a hole over here and two holes over here that I can use. I'm gonna pull the table saw back, pre-drill some holes, and then I'm going to drive in these, um, I think three or so inch um, pretty big lag screws with a washer and that's going to suffice to hold this in place. At least that's the thought. So until then, let's take this off, get some stain on it, let that cure for a while and um, finish this. All right, now that we've screwed everything in, this board should stay on its own and it absolutely does. So once these clamps come off, let's just see, oh yeah. That is solid. Look, I can lift the whole table saw up with that. So this is nice and solid, which is great. Um, next steps now are to attach the vise in the front and then uh, fit that with some wood, probably a uh, scrap two by four, and then drill my dog holes, reapply some linseed oil where needed, and then wax this beauty. Ah, we're almost there. Awesome, and just like that, our vise is attached. Um, the next step is to mark out where I want the dog holes to be, drill those holes, and then um, fix up you know, any sort of maybe chipping that might happen or touch up the linseed oil um, and see how those fit. There we have it, folks, all finished. Um, one thing I did that you didn't see, I put two coats of paste wax on, same way that I put um, the paste wax on my cast iron top in my table saw tune-up video. Um, I really like how this turned out. I'm glad that I went the extra width um, as opposed to keeping it at 10 inches, right about here, like what it used to be. Um, I think as I use this, I might make a couple changes. I may add more dog holes, we'll see. I may recess this uh, piece of two by four here, it looks like half an inch back, uh, to give myself that extra half inch of clamping space. We'll see what the practicality of this is after a lot of use. Um, either way, I'm really pleased. I'm happy that it extends my table another couple inches. I just like, and I think it looks cool. And it, it feels good to take out that um, stamped steel wing, which worked great, but to make this piece of equipment my own and really, you know, take advantage of the fact that you can 
customize. Um, I'm not a professional woodworker by any means. This is one of my nicer workspaces. Um, and I'm very, very happy about that. So thank you very much for watching. Do you have something like this? What modifications have you made to your table saw? Um, I'm excited to finally be doing this with uh, the workshop or with the dog hold workbench and vice and then the rotor over there. Thanks for watching and uh, happy woodworking. Bye.